Today's Monday Makeup Lesson is a follow-on for our beginner series using purple. Though I hope that anybody who isn't a beginner, maybe this will help you gain a better understanding to help any beginners in your life because today we're going to be using all purples, no neutrals, to create a very simple look. This follows along from our previous video where we created a very basic look using three shades of purple. A main purple shade, a matte muted, and a deeper purple. It was then paired with your favorite blush and highlighter of your choosing, which was optional, to create this look. Now moving on from that, I wanted to talk about layering and mixing different shades. So we are mixing our main purple with a red eyeshadow to create this look. This is a great way to introduce color while still keeping it quite wearable. And I have one other makeup look using purples on its way. So if that interests you, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started creating this look. So as always, we're going to start by applying an eyeshadow primer all over the lid and right up to the brows. This is going to give our eyeshadow something to hold on to. And also because my eyeshadow primer is tinted, it's going to give us a blank canvas to work on because it'll disguise any natural discoloration that we might have on the lid. Now, of course, you can use a concealer if you don't have an eyeshadow primer. However, it doesn't give the same sort of gripping power, so your eyeshadows might not last as long. As long as you are okay with that, then you can use a concealer. You may also find using concealer on oily skin. It kind of starts to separate the eyeshadows. However, for more of the mature or the drier skin, you might actually still get away with it. But just make sure you have a good base to start with. Similar to our last video, we're actually going to start by using this eyeshadow. So this is our muted purple kind of gray tone. And this is going to be worked into the crease of the eye. So that is where the eyelid creases into the eye shape. We're going to be focusing on this area and then we're going to slowly start to blend this up. Very similar to kind of contouring your face almost, but because we don't want to use any neutrals in this look, we're going to go for a kind of a gray purple. This is going to be used in kind of the same way that a transition shade or a contour or bronzer would be used on the face. Now, unlike our previous video, we're going to be mixing two eyeshadows together, the deep plum and a deep red. This is going to completely change how the purple is going to work. It's going to have much more of a ready tone. What I want you to do is completely saturate the lid with these two eyeshadows, picking up a little bit of each and then applying it onto the lid. Try to avoid going up into the crease. We've already applied our crease shade, so just avoid the crease completely and focus on the lid. One thing to bear in mind when you are mixing two shadows is that sometimes they can almost push off each other before they start to blend. So if you are blending two shadows in this way, you might want to start with the eyes. This is just going to make sure that we don't have too much fallout because the two shadows do kind of bounce and push off and then we end up with fallout. Eventually they will start to come together and blend together and look really beautiful on the lid. However, at the beginning, it can kind of be like a little tug of war that happens. I would also recommend using a synthetic brush. This is the Blanc Canvas Cosmetics E42. It has almost like a slick finish on the bristles because it's synthetic. It actually creates much more of a slicker finish, which means they're gonna blend really nicely together. More of the natural fibers that you get in some brushes, they have great gripping power. However, for mixing, that can mean that they bounce a little bit more, but with synthetic, it more sits on the bristles rather than pushes off one another. That's just me geeking out on brushes. Brushes. I love this brush. If you don't have it, I recommend to go and get it. I have been using it for about six years and I absolutely love it. It's my go-to when it comes to mixing. It's also just my go-to in general. I can use it for anything. Creams, liquids, gels, synthetics, all the way for me. What I want to do now is just to make sure that we have a blend right from the lid into the crease. So I'm going to take my blending brush and very softly go around the edges of the lid just to make sure that we don't have any harsh lines. Next, I'm going to take my favorite blush, so whatever blush you plan on using today, I'm going to apply this just into the crease of the eye as well. This is just going to bring the entire look together. I would recommend holding the brush really far down in the handle, bringing it low down in front of you, and then just pushing upwards into the crease of the eye. A very sheer amount is all you need for this. 
And I actually got a great question in my previous video. This is from Melanie and she says, what if the blush that you plan on using is very glowy? Won't that ruin the look? And she's totally right. It's a very, very good question. This is something that I mentioned in a couple of my other videos. You wanna make sure that you're using more matte shades into the crease of the eye. So try to offer more of a matte color than something that has too much of a shimmer or too much of a glow because it can actually throw off the proportions of your eye shape. For our next step, I'm gonna take this deep purple shade and just apply this on the outer edge of the eye. What this is gonna do is bring us a little bit more back into that purpley tone while creating a little bit more depth for us as well. Now, while I was filming this, I was actually listening to one of my favorite creators. Hannah does these amazing videos talking about, as I like to call them, triangle companies or pyramid schemes. But she was telling this story that somebody had sent into her, it's a horror story. And it made my eyes roll so much, they almost fell out of my head. But basically this was talking about someone who said that makeup is only for certain people. And it honestly made my eyes nearly fall out of my head because makeup is for everybody, but it's also for nobody. If you don't wanna wear it, don't wear it. If you wanna wear it, wear it. And this just blew my mind when I was listening to the story because there was so much wrong with it. But I love Hannah's approach to everything. I also love her little cats. They're so cute and adorable. I'm allergic to cats and it makes me wanna get a cat because they're just so cute. So go and check out Hannah, but that's why you can see my eyes nearly roll out of the back of my head. But I'm applying this purple on the outer edge of the eye, and this is just going to add a little bit more focus and a little bit more depth onto that outer corner. And then you should end up with something that looks like this. Now moving on, the next few steps are gonna be optional, so just bear that in mind. So for the next step, I'm gonna be taking that red eyeshadow. Now this has some glitter in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this and then very gently tap off the excess. And what this is gonna do is basically drop any of that glitter. So we're only gonna be left with the pigment. And this kind of follows along to what Melanie had been asking because we are gonna be applying this into the crease of the eye and we don't want anything too glittery into the crease of the eye. So by tapping it, we're actually gonna knock off the glitter but be left with the pigment. Now this is what I call a fade shade. So this creates that very soft fade, kind of on top of that blush shade and also that gray purple that we've already applied. It's very slightly just kissing this area. Now this is gonna be barely noticeable. As you can see from the before and after, it's not really there, but it is kind of there. And I just really like this technique. And then the next step is also really optional, but it is to use the setting spray over everything that we've already applied, just to emphasize them a little bit more. Because these eyeshadows are slightly older, sometimes they need a little bit of help by adding in moisture, and that's what a setting spray does. Now I feel like it was almost too intense by this stage, so I just applied a little bit of concealer on that inner third, then I applied my face highlight and blended it out with my blush. Now you don't have to do this, I just found that I was losing a little bit more structure, so this just added a bit more light into this makeup look. You could just go ahead and apply just a little bit of highlight on the inner corner and be good to go, but I went for something a little bit more fun. I also applied liner, which you know I never do but I feel like this look was calling to me from like 2015 and really I needed to apply liner for it. This is 2015 me when I used to actually do very dramatic looks with liner. This was actually a super fun one for me. I haven't done a makeup look like this in a long time. I feel like the older I get, the more of the muted tones I prefer, but sometimes it's nice to be adventurous. So definitely let me know if there's any other colors that you'd like to see. A lot of you were asking for blues, which I think we're gonna do really soon. And also in my previous video, I asked you guys to leave an emoji if you made it this far into the video. And I love the different combinations that you came up with. All I said was a swimming emoji and then so many of you came up with all these different combinations so I absolutely love that so because I don't want to hold you back from being creative I'm literally just going to say put any pink or purple emoji that you like and just have fun with it and as always my friends be kind to yourself be kind to others and if you get this far in the video you usually know I, I do a little bit of a talk about real life for a second the last two days have been very difficult I spent most of yesterday crying a lot and I do think it's important to share the not so pretty side of life particularly if you have a chronic illness like me so I spent a lot of time yesterday being very upset I wanted to get this video done which I did so yay <laughs> I'm really happy I managed to do 
it. But yesterday I, I just couldn't and it was a real struggle and um, bless his heart, Davey really had to had to try and make me laugh and smile even though I cried most of the day. But that's okay too, to have the days when you're just really sad because today I'm really happy. I, I actually feel okay today. But yesterday I didn't think that today was going to feel like today. My only advice that I would have if you are having a really bad day is just to let yourself kind of sit in it. And then when you feel strong enough, plan something. So I'm going to be seeing my family this week, which I'm excited about. And I really want to cook a really nice meal. So if you have any recommendations for a vegan dinner, because most of my family are vegetarians and vegans, definitely let me know. I'm really getting into tofu recently. So any tofu recipes or basically any chicken recipes that you really like, because I can I can make tofu into chicken, no problem. So at this stage, I'm I'm, I'm getting there. So any recipes that you think would be family friendly for vegans and vegetarians, let me know. That's my little plan for this week. And it just gave me something to look forward to. So I'm sending everybody who needs it an extra spoon. I'm sending you a hug. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. You're doing the best you can, which actually is something Davey told me yesterday. It made me cry even more because it was so sweet that he used my own catchphrase <laughs> against me. He was like, you got to be kinder to yourself. And he's right. We all have to be a little kinder to ourselves. So as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you in a video really soon.